okay let's get started i think uh, uh, thanks a lot you know uh, uh, welcome gentlemen for the culture club right so uh, i want to i'd like to set a bit of context here for the audiences as well so culture club uh, this is to, this is the 12th episode where we are attacking problems around e culture right so where we uh, ask questions and you know uh, share them share some really important thoughts around culture with 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 the uh, with the pandemic and remote remote work being the uh, you know the new normal right so uh, i just like to uh, 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 you know welcome gitesh and uh, ketan to to this episode as well and uh, before starting the episode right so i just want to give a quick uh, introduction on culture monkey for our audiences as well right so uh, culture monkey is the uh, has created this community culture club to uh, as an initiative to collaborate and discuss problems around culture and culture monkey is a uh, uh, employee engagement platform so where you know there are we, we, there is there is the, the real question to answer is why, right why culture monkey right so uh, the there are many problems that in culture monkey we solved where you know uh, i used to work for snapdeal i used to work for startups i know i was a t- engineer myself so i saw first hand the problems when it comes to engagement and culture and i saw that these workplaces are really highly engaged yet the engagement at initiatives taken by the leaders people leaders and ceos um, came from top down right so uh, one of the problems there is generic right so we want to solve that you know we want to make it bottom up and we want to make uh, uh, engagement and c- building culture within an organization a continuous process where you are listening to your employees continuously and once you decide to do that there are multiple problems where you are dealing with multiple locations diverse demographics and you have uh, different sentiments between teams and then you ha- you collate all of this uh, you know da- data from all of these uh, segments and then you have a lot of raw data so we uh, you know you need some actionable insights from uh, all of this data you collected and on top of that uh, once you have some actionable insights you need to take actions like for that also we have a place where in culture monkey within the platform you're taking actions on all the findings that you made and uh, to personalize engagement we have manager logins where your uh, uh, managers are getting access and they are personalizing the engagement so yeah without any further delay right so i just want to uh uh introduce culture monkey and culture club this thank you so much uh, gitesh pleasure to have you here thank you so much for joining in and uh, for our audience uh, a, a little bit about gitesh uh, that i wanted to share uh, gitesh has worked with brands like uh, as central said he heads people management for an organization called nearby technologies private limited it's based out of mumbai the, the head office is uh, mumbai and gitesh has worked with brands like magma fincorp high care services enix financial startup capital deutsche bank ge money uh, to name a few and he brings with him close to about 20 years of experience in in human resources uh, function uh, apart from uh, uh, hr best practices which which comes with his experience and passion he is also a technology evangelist and uh, he has worked and led multiple transformation and change management pro- uh, projects across the organizations that that he's worked with so gitesh welcome again to culture clubs e culture master classes powered by culture monkey and thank you so much for your time it would be good to know more about you and our, our audience usually are very interested in the kind of people we are able to get so uh, having somebody like you is going to be very very ins- insightful so if you could share more about uh, you gitesh that would be super amazing and also bit about your organization if that's okay with you yeah thanks thanks ketan and thanks until for giving me this opportunity of sharing my experiences with uh, you and the audience and i hope that uh, there will be mutual learning happening on either side so i'm really excited about this uh, new uh, this is my second in fact uh, video discussion i'm having with uh, with someone like you so it's very very exciting to talk and share my insights and thoughts with you well about me uh, as you rightly said i'm a hr professional for over 20 years of experience uh, a very passionate human resources person so to so to say uh, also passionate about sports passionate about photography so wow. these are few of my you know so called hobbies uh, which i try to also bring it to my workplace so i introduced a, a what we call like a tournament in uh, pay nearby uh, also had in tata capital had in high care so i'm very passionate about 
employees uh, or my colleagues whom I work with are also part of the sports culture in the organization. So, so that's about me. Um, born and brought up in Mumbai, been here for since my birth. So, a typical Mumbai girl, so to say. So that's me. Wow. Nice. I'm a typical sure. Chennai, you know, just to add one point there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and which part of Mumbai is this, Gitesh? The, the where is the office? Or where was the office for, for us? It has become worse uh, after we have gone virtual. But uh, which part of uh, Mumbai uh, is the office at? So we are at Andheri East in uh, Mumbai. MIDC Andheri East. So that's our office is. Excellent. And, and is there something about your organization you would want the uh, audience to know about? So Pay Nearby is a brand that we go by. The company name is Nearby Technologies. And we have uh, various products in the fintech space. So we have other enabled payments. We have domestic money transfers. We have recharges. Um, we also have a travel company. We have an insurance company where we do insurance broking for our, for our customers. So, so we are well diversified. We are also looking at uh, building NBFC in, in near future in terms of also reaching out to our customer base. The uniqueness about our business is that we are a B2B organization. And we reach out to retailers and distributors to service a last mile. So, if you, so a typical customer, my end customer, my end user would be a typical a maid or a driver who goes to the nearest retailer shop to recharge his or her phone. There they can also do money transfers and they can also withdraw cash. So basically empowering and enabling those people uh, who are, do not have the accessibility to ATMs and banks. You can walk to the nearest uh, digital center that we call, we, we call them Dija, we call them um, you know, digital Pradhans, so to say. And these guys can go to the nearest Pradhan and uh, do a transaction on the, on the bank. All they need is an Aadhaar enabled uh, bank account. I can do the entire transactions on on a, on a tip of their finger. So that's all it is. So you go to the nearest retailer shop, you put your finger on the, on the biometric and you can withdraw cash, you can transfer money, you can do any transactions that you want. So it's more of digitizing uh, the uh, last mile is how we look at it and we are very passionate about it because we really believe that that's one area which needs to be catered to and we passionately do that. So that's what we do as an organization. Interesting. Good, good, good. Thank you. So I will come to the question straight. Uh, Gitesh, we have five top of the mind questions and uh, yeah, as much of experience in conversational, uh, you could make it. It's going to be super amazing for our audience and, and for me and Senthil personally. So the first thing is uh, with this world going remote uh, and uh, what are the challenges did you see the CXOs had to deal with, especially when it came to matters around say culture and, uh, and engagement, what, what are the things that you saw? In terms of the uh, uh, changes I have seen in terms of the culture or shift I've seen in, in my experience is one is that, um, so if you look at the way work from home was looked upon earlier, it was more of a benefit and a facility given to the employees. It was not seen that you can work from as, as usual types. And actually right. when this happened, organizations were wondering saying, how will we really manage this? Because people will be working from home, not visible. And a lot of this hinges upon two things. One is accountability and trust. So I think when you hear about productivity not going down or, or it's been maintained or this marginal loss in productivity, I think it's more to do with the uh, accountability and the trust exposed by the company in the people and people repaying it back in terms of doing the deliverables. So somewhere when the initial it began saying how will it really work, will it really pan out, but the way organization rose up to the challenge and the way the colleagues and the employees came along and demonstrated that we can really work from wherever we can if the intent is to work if kpis are well defined or if the work given is you know well articulated then the output can still be the same irrespective of where we work from so i think the so i think one thing which really i see changing is people being accountable and people being trusting that this can work yes. you know this can definitely work because so that's one thing which i saw as a changing culture where people are now moving towards accountability and trust, doesn't matter where you work from, but you can deliver. So that's one thing I've seen changing. That's very powerful. In fact, uh, that, that's a very fresh perspective. 
of uh, yeah basically if you look at suddenly the trust and accountability came on the platter straight and uh, there was no option to do it and uh, of course the the last data in the recent studies that i have been going through says productivity is up by 30 40% across so very 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 and it's very interesting insight that you gave thank you the second one which i think which has worked is the flexibility uh because people do realize that when people work from home in the current situation where there is no so called support that we require in terms of the household support that we want or children are in school and we can still work peacefully you know all of that is not there children are there you have to keep your eye whether kids are doing their stuff attending school or not you have to also ensure that there are no maids so you have to cook yourself you have to keep your household clean all by yourself so people also realize that 9:30 to 6:30 when i was working in office i was there full time with no diversions of mine but now people also understand that 9:00 to 6:30 may not be a practical way of working in a current situation so there is an amount of flexibility made available to the people to deliver on their output saying so doesn't matter we understand you take some break to cook you take some break to look after your children studies and so on and so forth so but we provide that flexibility and and the colleagues and employees again responded back by saying okay fine you been reposing this faith in us we will also work beyond 6:30 and ensure that the work is done yes and hence you don't see any loss in productivity or we don't see you know any any such uh, challenges that people must have thought they might see when this happens because people also rose up to the challenge saying that we understand and we are willing to stretch ourselves to ensure that the work given to us is delivered yeah that's something which again saw a very very different sort of sort of output coming from people's behavior Interesting. Yeah, they reciprocate. I, I think. I think uh, that's what I'm hearing from you is that suddenly the trust and accountability and uh, faith is reciprocated. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I think to add. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Sandeep, you're saying something. No, I, I was saying so to add one point here, right? I think uh, uh, you know it, we organizations typically spend a lot of time and energy to build trust and build accountability. but then what this is done is 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 it reminds me of this line that says necessity pushes you to uncover your potential right so that is automatically happen yeah and third thing i see is care which is started to come in people do care it is not that you know i mean in earlier you just walk into office and tell people come on everybody in a conference call let's have a stand up meeting let's discuss and used to talk to people but now you will figure out saying okay can i call at 11 can i call at 10:30 you check saying is availability there you start the call with asking how are you is everything fine you know i mean there's no health issues in your area in your home in your family and so on and so forth i think even the care part has gone up to a great extent where people are started taking interest and people also care that okay people are working from home so you just cannot pick up the call whenever you want to but still there is again as i said a bit of um, reciprocation from the employee and from the manager and from the organization that they provide an environment where accountability trust flexibility and care has now started becoming so visible and demonstrated by on both the sides which is what i think is making this beautiful relationship work trust so are some of the three things key themes i have been observing which has really worked for for this work from home or ensuring that the productivity remains what it is is because of these three things which are very well articulated demonstrated and manifested by people which is what is bringing about this kind of a work environment today this basis your experience or whatever you could predict now say 6 month later where do you think the world would stand with with uh, because humans have a huge tendency of going back to what was the earlier norm or or even the world would try to go back to that or what is that you see uh, from from an organization especially this infra con construct and how organization may choose to interact into uh, interact or operate what's your point of view there no i think this will be to a great extent there will be hybrid model if you ask me uh, there will be some amount of people working from home permanently but i believe it should be on rotation basis so that people are able to also connect with their colleagues in office 
if you make it a permanent one and somewhere the social connection which is there uh, can can isolate people which is not great so i believe that uh, but i don't see 100% of people returning to work anytime soon and even if they return it won't it won't it would be in rotation it won't be uh, so if i have 100 seats i'll perhaps take 70 seats and 30 people will work from home any given point in time and that number can keep growing as uh, the comfort increases but i see that the new normal would be that like you like you are talking for your own self that you are now virtual right um, yes. so i believe that most of the organizations will move on move in that direction where people will have the i will have a hybrid model of some people working from home and some people from office and on a rotation basis everybody gets an opportunity to come to office also and connect with their colleagues and so on and so forth i think that's going to be the way forward yeah and and, and just with an experience so I've also been speaking to people in my network. So at Rento Mojo, what we do is provide work from home uh, uh, material, uh, chair and table also. I did it for my employees. I realized it was just so much relaxing when it when the chair came to my workplace. And I spoke to a lot of HR folks. Yeah, but most of them are anticipating that the hybrid model is is going to come in. And probably one opportunity that I see is. technology would play a very important role in enabling this uh, connect so so whenever person is going to come physically i think you would see a connect but how do we still virtually understand and listen to people is 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 a continuous challenge most organization most hr folks that i spoke to spoke about so uh, with with i think some sense happening in this entire madness i think now answers have started to come in so people are taking uh, choices and and uh, adopting technology so that that's one of the most interesting thing that i saw perhaps over the last few months sure. Sure. i think uh, uh, zoho zoho announced permanent work from home yesterday or this week zoho uh, the the saas company in chennai they announced uh, permanent work from home they have like uh, up to 5000 8000 employees so uh, that's one of the news for you know uh, from chennai that we we had and i think freshworks announced uh, work from home is extended to june july next year right so this is some of the yeah. so as girish said I, i it's going to be very very hybrid as a model and uh, while work from home a lot of people are right. announcing my sense is that i'm with girish that there are human connect gitesh is also oh, sorry <laughs> yes oh, sorry <laughs> okay uh, that human connect uh, is very very powerful and important if you ask me i would definitely once a week want to go to office i hear a lot of people would do how would this social the new social construct evolve uh, we will have to wait and watch but uh, yeah looks like uh, as gitesh said hybrid is going to be the way forward so it is very interesting and given i believe that you cannot really make uh, certain people you know decide that you will not come to office you have to keep on rotation basis so the social connect that you spoke about i think that will be very important for people to stay connected with the organization and with their colleagues so i would really propagate saying that it should be a rotational based uh, where everybody gets an opportunity and of course it's it's voluntary i mean i'm not going to force people to come to our if they don't want to but as a as a model we can always tell people that there is a flexibility to come to work if you wish to come to work and that's a part right so 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 to to come to the uh, question that i was trying to understand from you gitesh earlier now when this happened what what are those conversations you, your cxos were trying to have with you to to figure out how to deal with this transition or the change where the world has gone digital there there are cultures there are nuances there are impacts on engagement what what are those interesting things and very very uh, uh, the repetitive things that you kept on hearing again and again and you were trying to solve for along with your cxos the Disc- initial discussion was in terms of enablement how do you enable people to work from home in terms of providing computers laptops uh, providing the dongles so that people everybody may not have wifi so to say you know if some people were only on that uh, daily 2g plan on their yes. phones uh, so enabling people was the first the foremost thought that came to how do you and en- we enable people to work from home in terms of physical infrastructure so that was the first and the foremost discussion we did made a list of the list of employees who had what infrastructure what needs to be provided and so on and so forth that's one thing we did we also formed a bcp team which was given a responsibility 
of ensuring that we enable the organization colleagues to work from home effectively. So that's another thing that we did. And we were a little prepared ahead of time before the lockdown was because we thought it will it will get there. So preparing ourselves a bit, little ahead of time, saying, you know, this is imminent. So let's prepare ourselves. We were almost a week or 10 days ahead of the lockdown, so to say, in terms of preparing ourselves. Saying, because this is right. imminent, so let's quickly do it. Of course, you know, so it, it spilled over because it, it happened suddenly after one day. But, yeah. but we were able to, to a great extent, uh, create a platform in the organization to have these conversations and become and get ready for it. So that's one thing that happened. Second thing happened was how do you really like monitor, you know, effectiveness of what we do and we all focus on KPIs. We, luckily, we are one organization which has very robust KPIs which are done in in month of October, so to say, October, November. So everybody had very clear cut KPIs, so to say, on what each one of them are working. So it became much easier because the KPIs were there, deliverance were already defined. So again, those were available for people to people to eventually go and what they're supposed to, what are the outcome supposed to be. <laughs> The challenge starts coming in when the rubber hits the road because when people start working is when the real so it's it's not so difficult to plan for it. The difficulty happens when people start working. You know? <laughs> right. You see the challenges of speed, you see the challenges of collaboration, lack of visibility. Right. These are three things which I think you know most of the you know leaders experience. The one is speed, you know, because it was so much easier, as I said, when you're working in the same office, same place, walk up to the colleague. Just yes. resolve the issue, get the team into the conference room, tell them what to be done, discuss, deliberate, and go on a desk and deliver. Right? That is no there, that's not there any longer. So although the productivity is there, but I'm very sure the speed would have taken a backseat in terms of delivering the output. And that's and you know, everything today is about speed of execution. Right? I mean, everybody is saying, Oh, let's do it quickly because somebody else will do faster than us. So how do you quickly adapt and ensure that the speed of execution doesn't suffer? So that's been, I think, one challenge which most of the uh, companies would have faced in terms of how to deal with it. Uh, second would have been in terms of collaboration. You know, when you work in cross-functional teams, uh, that could, that's the second challenge that you face that the account and in collaboration accountability keeps shifting, you know, because as the project evolves, hands on handshake happen, hands on hands off happen. And then coordinating that becomes another challenge uh, in terms of how do you collaborate and ensure that you're able to deliver on the timelines that you have to deliver on. And the third thing which from the employee perspective, which I think happens is visibility. Because the manager feels, I have given everything to you, why are you taking so long to give it back to me? You know, and that visibility is not there. Earlier it was pretty much there, you're there on your desk, you walk up to them, Sit together, get it done. You know what somebody's working on. You only give, you only keep changing priorities of people as a leader, and then you wonder, saying, you know, why work is not getting done. But but you knew that because you're always there physically, you know, prioritizing for them. But when it happens over the phone or over the video call, it's not the same. So the visibility of what is happening, and that's where again it comes in saying, the employee also might feel, the colleague also might feel that, uh, am I doing enough, or is my manager thinking that I am not doing enough? So that, these three things, you know, eventually which comes together in terms of speed, in terms of collaboration, in terms of visibility, is what creates an insecurity in minds of people. Yes. And that's where HR comes into play and say, hold on, we will, we will do the balancing act for you. And that's a people's expectation also. That, you know, can HR come in and help us balance this because it's at time very overwhelming. Because I don't see you, there's no visibility, I keep giving you task, but I know that it's going to be a challenge because of flexibility which I explained earlier, but still I want the speed of execution. And that's what, you know, tears apart the person on the other side saying, hope the company, the managers will understand what am I going through and is there a department of function or a person we can go and talk to and who can play a role for leveler for me. And innovating that, and keeping that abreast with the employees is where the HR challenge starts. Saying, how do you ensure that a person does not feel isolated, does not feel lack of visibility, does not feel nobody is there to collaborate, and does not feel I'm getting hauled up for not doing work on time? And that's where we come in saying, okay, so the three things are there, which is trust, accountability, flexibility, and care. 
But when these other three things come in, which is speed of execution, collaboration, and visibility, how you all put all six things comes together, and the experience what the employee gets is where the HR role comes in. Is what I feel. Just carrying on that question to something that I wanted to understand, and this is this is going to be largely for the entire fraternity. So. what does this change or transition mean for the hr fraternity what are the future things or the skills or competencies or new things that you would want or you you would your point of view would be for the hr folks to imbibe adopt and uh, take this ahead what 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 as per you would this mean for the fraternity so one is uh, leveraging technology so that's going to be the key one but leveraging technology the adoption becomes a challenge so you have yeah. best of the technology but adoption rates of of that technology is where we have to keep pushing you know saying please we have deployed a technology but our people coming on that platform so creating a pull factor on that technology platform becomes very important so how do you keep re- renovating yourself so that people can keep coming back to that technology platform what is the pull factor which will get an employee or a colleague to that platform so that's one second is refreshing it so one is you know creating a platform how you refreshing that platform so that people are wanting to come back for something new again or again so that's so one is technology and refreshing the content on the technology and creating a pull on the technology people will go and spend time on that that's one i would say second would be in terms of uh, reaching out to people so you can either use the culture survey that you have you know centrally spoke about or you can just pick up the phone and talk to people but i can also understand that in the larger organizations where people where the hr to people ratio is 1 is to 200 or whatever it become impossible for people to reach out to 200 people and talk to them on a on a fortnight or a monthly basis and that's where again technology comes into play to say how do i reach out to those many people and they feel included in the organization so that becomes the second challenge the third challenge i see is that uh, earlier distributed workforce are restricted to maybe perhaps people in operations or customer support or in sales but now it is the entire organization which is distributed right so how do you keep them connected with the organization so these are few things that as hr and i don't have ready solutions to be very honest i am also evolving and discovering as we go along uh, in terms of what will really work what will not work because this is something new for all of us uh, it's very easy to town halls you know in a in an office where everybody comes together and you offer uh some refreshments for people and so on and so forth or you come together in a cafe and do birthday celebrations and cut cakes and all of that all of that is gone now so but how do you still maintain the same flavor or the spirit of what you're doing that's another one that we need to figure out saying how do you really maintain that the good part is that reach has improved so earlier town halls were perhaps restricted to maybe only to people who are sitting in a particular office or a particular location but right. now when you do it on a on a zoom or a google meet or any of these platforms uh everybody can log in so entire organization becomes accessible to you and and you also being accessible to entire organization which has been a big win if you ask me from that perspective but again it comes back to adoption how many people really want to log into that a town hall and listen to what ceo wants to say so adoption is where again remains a challenge how do you adopt and get people onto the platform so there are few things i can tell you kaden which is what each one of us perhaps are dabbling with as hr heads how do you really get people or how do you hook onto them so that it is as same as working in office as compared to working from home but it's not the same we all know that you know so it's going to be difficult and how much can you keep how many tambolas can you do how many antakshiris can you do right i mean you have to evolve beyond that you have yeah. to evolve beyond that and uh, and that's where the challenge lies that what the evolution is but you have to also do this because these are the ways of connecting with the organize with the people you know right. people might say that you know hr is our rangolian antakshiris but please understand that's where to connect with the people you know that's the way you come people to bring people together mm-hmm. in festivities you know and and share uh, the common happiness that you see during festivities right so i guess that's where it is it is kedan you know uh, so we have been doing all of this which i told you we have monthly town halls with the founders coming and talking we have we have monthly rnrs we have monthly birthday celebrations all of it happens in town hall uh, 
Now, then we have quarterly, so to say, employee connect programs, which could be on wellness because that's another one which is very important during this time. So we have wellness programs we do for the employees. Uh, we have yoga, you know, which we do for the employees, and many other things I keep saying. Well, employee, and we also have a cultural committee, which is which is which is owned by the employees, and they come and tell us what they want to do, and we provide the platform for them to do it. So all of that has has worked as a combination. But the rhythm has to be still be figured out because nobody imagine this will be as long as six, seven, eight, nine months. Yeah. Prepare for six, seven months. We can do this, but you know, keeping innovating continuously as an HR uh, team, it's not easy. <laughs> in fact, in fact, I, I bumped into a. I, I, I'm a firm believer in the power of technology, and glad to see uh, people like Sense is trying to. Bring in a lot of technology to what uh, HR does and what uh, people function does. I met a met a uh, somebody who created a very interesting tool, which is about uh, creating this entire office, taking this entire office virtually, where people can do coffee conversations and chat. Looked interesting. Of course, I'm I'm a firm believer in the power of personal connect, but maybe I'm also trying to learn that. I'll, I'll share those with with you guys later if you want to explore it for your organization. But uh, a lot of innovation happening and a lot to do i'm glad that uh, you shared that so so uh, that that was for the hr folks uh, from gitesh now there are uh, everybody is an employee and an individual first before being in any other role so what are those two three things learnings that or or, or piece of advice that you would have for people in general looking at how the world has transformed and where it may go what, what are the things you want people to stay strong to or hold on to or, or probably be flexible to well i think first thing i would i would tell people is that uh, take care that's most important you know take care of your mental health take care of your physical health i think that's that's paramount you know and uh, there's a very thin line between being fearless and careless you know i mean people feel that mujhe kuch nahi hoga mujhe kya ho sakta hai you know uh, so people have to understand that you know there's a thin line between being fearless and careless so let's not be careless you know uh, some amount of fear is good to uh, you know in such time like especially where you can ensure that health mental and physical is paramount so i keep telling people if any organization is doing any activities on mental wellness or health wellness please participate Right. It might it might look like you know what to log in and see somebody doing yoga on the screen, but I guess you people should log in and they should really spend time. It's important because we take that one thing for granted is mental health and physical well-being. That's taken for granted. So I would first tell everybody that especially during these times, that's one. Uh, second, I would tell them is that be accountable for what you do. Uh, it's very important. You know, and that's how the trust that the company's reposed in you will only be repaid in format of being accountable you know so and third is take ownership you know if you want to take accountability you take ownership you know uh, let's not pass on the box saying i sent a email but it's not you know, it's not going to be the same you cannot walk up to the guy and say sent a email khol mere samne kholo baat karenge nahi hoga it wouldn't happen that way right right so take right. the ownership you know just not saying i had called you but you didn't take my call I sent a WhatsApp message, but only there's no blue tick, so you haven't even read my message. <laughs> so, 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 no, let's, let's, let's not do that. You know, and take take ownership. And I would say the same thing to people who are you know on the other side saying you know if somebody is reaching out to you, then please respect that and call back or reach out. Even if you you know do it after half an hour, one hour, you know, but just do it because then otherwise other person doesn't know. And in this. Situation that we are in, not knowing is the most dangerous situation to be. Yes. You know, and I sent an email but no response. I sent a WhatsApp but no response. I tried calling but you're busy on a call. I called you, say I'm another call. I'll call you back. You never called me back. I think that's what leads to a lot more uh, well said negative thoughts coming into people's mind. Absolutely. As if I don't see you, and then you don't respond to me on time. I really wonder, saying, what's happening with me? <laughs> Yeah, so it's very important that on either side, on the employee as well as on the manager side or leader side, it's very important that you respond and communicate with people. 
So I would say be accountable, take ownership, and please communicate. If the three things are done well and with proper intent, then you will see this work relationship of work from home, and it will be really beautiful. And and I keep saying, people have not seen real work from home because still to great extent you are confined to your homes. Imagine yeah. a work from home situation when malls are working, theaters are working, parks are open, and then you and your maids are there. You know your kids are in school, and you're working from home. You will experience a different joy. The pleasure will come in there. You know, maybe today you are not feeling that pleasure because anybody can call any time because you're at home only. There's nothing yeah. to do. You can't go for a movie. You can't go to a mall. You can't go to a park, right? But imagine the work from home where everything is normal, and you're working from home, and you still deliver the same you're delivering. I think no person should complain than a more beautiful working relationship than one can experience. And I'm really looking forward to that work from home. If you ask me, actually, and not this one. Yeah. That is where the real test of work from home is. You know, where everything is normal. I'm still working from home, and I'm still delivering the productivity. And that's where I would see the success of the program of work from home. This may not be the because you're you're at home most of the time. You're available, accessible, you're doing your work, right? And hence, I don't feel the joy of it. I feel stress as an employee. I feel stress, or I feel stress. You know, I'm at home. बॉस को भी फोन करता है कहा जाएगा घर पे तो है मैं Do you think that's the future, or do you think it's already here? What's your point of view when when you hear that word? See, honestly, if you ask me, it's always been there. You know, I mean, I was just trying to go back to my G days where we used to have those CBDs, CPTs, computer-based trainings. Uh-huh. So we used to so induction program would be on a on a CD, and people can at their convenience go and check about the organization. So one was doing a new year orientation in a room, and then you give a joining kit which has a CD. Just go out, go to your home, put it into your laptop or your computers, and just go through the organization all over again. Uh, now that has moved from your your uh, CDs to a cloud. That's it, right? So if you ask me, it's always there. It's, it's all about adoption. I I keep repeating myself. everything is there for people to look at including the interviews you know which were there i've been doing video interviews for i don't know how many years now right and and every time it's evolving it's evolving you can make your notes while talking to somebody somebody can do coding you can give a coding test while you are doing interviewing and what not right the evolution has gone to a great extent i mean it's unimaginable if you ask me what are the adoption rates is where it all comes down to you know it's all about adoption rates in the in the, in the organization in the hr fraternity also i think even the price point has become attractive now hrms solutions are available at competitive price so are you know the surveys and so are your lms solutions and so on and so forth i think companies need to start working on it and other side the employees also need to start accepting this a way of working and accept that this is how it will go you have to be online you have to take online lessons seriously you have to be you know uh, educated enough to understand how to operate on a on a e learning kind of a solution and adopt to it it's all about adoption people have to understand there are going to be tools there are going to be technology which will enable them but here the hr fraternity has to appreciate and use that and deploy that and other end employees has to appreciate and adopt to it and the adoption rates is where the challenge is if you ask me it is not about you know having tools available to engage with people you know through a distance it's all about adoption rates right and and that's one thing which i think every person will struggle is saying how do you really get to a job adoption rate of 90% where 90% people are at any given point in time attending to a particular program which is being run online i think that's where the challenge lies and again i'm i throw the challenge back to the technology experts like sentil and saying can you create a product for us where the adoption by default becomes so rich right that nature right. i don't have to struggle for adoption it just happens because the product is so powerful 
that people will come to this platform over and over again and engage with us yeah. Yeah. so i really want to see a product which really has a pull factor today it's a push factor to some extent can there be yes. a pull factor you know to yes. to the technology products that we have where people will come and engage proactively with you and you will see a different altogether engagement levels through this uh, e so called platforms that we have yes. Yes. thank you thank you so much gitesh uh, central an audience that's that's from my side over to you central yes thanks a lot ketan and thanks a lot gitesh i think uh, the you know for us we've already i mean during the middle of the conversation right so i was i was really really able to relate to a lot of points like i said already and it was learning for me already and i was able to uh, validate that am i the only one who is insecure right so i think uh, uh, collaboration has taken a huge hit and you know you know gitesh you have validated that and not only that a lot of other points you know i would say one of the quotes that you said where you're saying that not knowing is very dangerous right so and how over communication in this uh, uh, in this phase of work you know where we we have to communicate we we, we cannot like uh, uh, we have to be responsible in uh, communicating and making making sure that the message is reached right so uh, th- that is some of the very important points so i think for audiences this is going to be a great listen and uh, thanks a lot ketan thanks a lot gitesh you know looking forward to more sessions and yeah have a great day ahead with you guys